This is the account of Hanno, king of Carthage, about his voyage to the Libyan lands beyond the pillars of Heracles, which he also set up in the shrine of Kronos. The Carthaginians ordered Hanno to sail out of the pillars of Heracles and found a number of Libophoenician cities. He set sail with 65 oared ships, about 30,000 men and women, food and other equipment. After sailing beyond the pillars for two days, we founded our first city, called Thymiaterion. Below it was a large plain. Sailing westward from there, we arrived at Sodoias, a Libyan promontory covered with trees. Here we dedicated a temple to Poseidon. Sailing to the east for half a day, we reached a lake. It was not far from the sea and was covered with many long reeds from which elephants and other wild animals were eating. After our visit to the lake, we sailed on for one day. By the sea, we founded cities called Karakon Techos, Gite, Acra, Melita, and Arambis. Continuing our voyage from there, we reached the Lyxos, a large river flowing from Libya. The Lyxites, a nomadic tribe, were pasturing their cattle beside it. We remained with them for some time and became friends. Beyond them, hostile Ethiopians occupied a land full of wild animals. It was surrounded by the great mountains from which the Lyxos flows down. According to the Lyxites, strange people dwell among these mountains. Cavemen who run faster than horses. When we had got interpreters from the Lyxites, we sailed along the desert shore for two days to the south. After sailing eastward for one day, we found in the recess of a bay a small island which had a circumference of five stades. We left settlers there and called it Kern. We calculated from this journey that this island lay opposite Carthage, for the time sailing from Carthage to the Pillars and from there to Kern was the same. Sailing from there, we crossed a river called Juretes and reached a bay which contained three islands bigger than Kern. After a day's sail from here, we arrived at the end of the bay, which was overhung by some very great mountains, crowded with savages clad in animal skin. By throwing stones, they prevented us from disembarking and drove us away. Leaving from there, we arrived at another large, broad river, teeming with crocodiles and hippopotamuses. Returning from there, we went back to Kern. From there, we sailed to the south for 12 days. We remained close to the coast, which was entirely inhabited by Ethiopians, who fled from us when we approached. Even to our lig sites, their language was unintelligible. On the last day, we anchored by some big mountains. They were covered with trees, whose wood was aromatic and colourful. Sailing around the mountains for two days, we came to an immense expanse of sea beyond which, on the landward side, was a plain. During the night, we observed big and small fires everywhere, flaming up at intervals. Taking on water there, we continued for five days along the coast until we reached a great bay, which, according to our translators, was the Horn of the West. There was a large island in it, and in it a lagoon, which was salt, like the sea, and on it another island. Here we disembarked. In daytime, we could see nothing but the forest, but during the night, we noticed many fires alight and heard the sounds of flutes, the beatings of cymbals and tom-toms, and the shouts of a multitude. We grew afraid, and our diviners advised us to leave this island. Quickly and in fear, we sailed away from that place. Sailing on for four days, we saw the coast by night, full of flames. In the middle was a big flame, taller than the others and apparently rising to the stars. By day, this turned out to be a very high mountain, which was called Chariot of the Gods. Sailing thence along the torrents of fire, 
we arrived after three days at a bay called Horn of the South. In this gulf was an island resembling the first with a lagoon within which was another island full of savages. Most of them were women with hairy bodies whom our interpreters called gorillas. Although we chased them we could not catch any males. They all escaped being good climbers who defended themselves with stones. However, we caught three women who refused to follow those who carried them off, biting and clawing them. So we killed and flayed them and brought their skins back to Carthage, for we did not sail any further, because our provisions were running short.